All right, all right. Good evening. Uh, all right. You should see my screen. Good morning to you, Sandy. Good to see you. You should see my screen. Okay, so today. I think today's going to be good, but I'm calling a bit of an audible. It's our last two weeks um, of trading foundations. I had two things on the agenda. And hello to you, Leonard Jones. Good to see you, sir. Love it. <laughs> uh, two lot, two remaining, and then we switch gears to options. Um, do I? I should. I should have your email. Um, is are you not receiving emails, Leonard? Yeah, if you're not receiving email, oh goodness, type it in here. I'm actually gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be printing out today's chat it it gives me a, it allows me to you know access our chat but i'm going to be i'm going to be using today's chat for some other things as you'll see as we get into today um because i'm i don't want to have to write everything down that i'm going to be asking you guys questions about where you'll be typing some things in so type it to me if you don't mind because i'll have it and i'll just dive right into our list and make sure it's there um i thought i had checked it but here's what i would say um check your spam Check your spam. You're you're looking for messages coming from hello at the marketwatchgroup.com. Um and and when you first come in, sometimes they end up in like the spam filter and you've got to shift them over and then your email recognizes that it's good. But I will I will definitely check on my end as well. And if anyone else isn't receiving, please let me know. Uh uh okay. Okay, perfect. I will absolutely make sure those come as of today. Uh, welcome out to the Market Watch Group Trading Foundations final Q and A. Meaning, this is just right. We're, we're going to pop in. I'm going to kind of walk through what we've done, but this is a open open forum. Whatever question it is, anything that we've talked about in foundations, anything we do in the group where you're like, you know what, Scott, you go through this. I'm not sure why you're doing that, or can you talk about? This is just open. Now I have an agenda. So so we're going. I'm Scott. These are the disclaimers. Let's go through our normal intro process. Remember that we are educational and illustrative purposes only. We are not advisors. We are not brokers. Um, every decision you make will be your own, yada, yada. Today's agenda, Q&A. You got a question? I don't care what it's about. Current market conditions? Great. A trade you're in. Great. A trade you're considering. Absolutely. Um, any question. If it's outside of trading, I'm going to ask my Magic 8-Ball. So that's that's the answer you'll get. But And I do have a Magic 8-Ball on my desk at all times. Of course. How do you make those final hard decisions when you're not quite sure? You got to go somewhere. I go to the 8-Ball. We're going to talk about what's upcoming. So I, I do want to walk through so you have a sense of, of what we're doing and, and, and what's coming. Um, and based on your response, it may like help me prioritize things. Um, but what what do we have coming up? A quick little Kaizen brainstorm amongst the group, those of us who are here. So some of you um, have been with me quite a while. Perry, you know who you are. <laughs> some of you are new. I've said from the beginning, and and this is this is something that I'm working towards, and I'm trying to not allow myself to get complacent where I'm like, Hey, this group is great. We do great things. We could be better. I think I could do better. Uh, we can have something. We can do it better. There's more we could do. There's more we can get out of this. I know we can use discord better than we are. I hope the trade alerts does that. I, I the, the, the trade alerts, I know I've been talking about them, but <clears throat> it's the last piece is the, is just the SMS text because we want to make sure that everybody's getting every message Sometimes email can have issues and we don't want that. Um, so that's one thing that's upcoming. Uh, I'm just going to start talking about what's upcoming. The door is open. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, what can we do better? So we're going we're gonna to go specifically one step at a time through our Kaizen process. What's good that we should keep doing? 
What do you like? What do you like? Man, this is really helpful. So I can make sure we, we emphasize those things. What are we doing that's not so helpful? And we could eliminate and, and just put it out there, right? Uh, you know, uh, you can just kind of put the comment and just be like, I don't know if we need this. Maybe I'll convince you that we do. But let's have a dialogue here. What can we do that we haven't thought of yet? So as you're going through the group, you're like, God, man, this group is great, but it would be even better if <clears throat> X. <clears throat> so solve for X. That's, that's what we're doing. Um, it's, it's, it's wide open. So excuse me, let me get a quick drink. So the Q&A is on. Anything you want to look at, anything about the current market, anything about a current trade, anything about a potential trade, uh, anything about what we have covered so far. Let's go through a couple of things. Leonard says, I'm still a little confused on buying options. Here's what I want to do for you, Leonard. This is just for you. I want to start an options, an entire options course for two months. I want to start it on Tuesday. I want to invite you. Everyone else can come. I mean, of course they can come too. It's for you. Options, baby. That's what we're going to be doing. Two straight months, of course. Now, what do we have now? Um, here, you have intro to options videos in this. Don't forget. Um, and if, and, and uh, if you haven't been in here, the link will be in the email that you'll get when I make sure your email's in there. Um, yeah, I'm just playing. We're for sure doing options. But there's already some stuff for you here. So there's intro to options. Then you have like right here, you have um, a great one. Key concepts, terminology, basic option strategies. That's a buying options session right there. Uh, another intro. So if you want to just kind of go through these intro videos, fantastic, man. We go through, talk about the terminology that's important. Make sure you've got that basis in. Then we start talking about concepts. Um, this trading foundations course was eight, eight sessions. We felt like it was a little condensed. So we are multiplying it by two. Now we have 16 sessions for me to go through really dive in. You'll understand the Greeks. You'll understand option pricing models. What do we, what can we do to translate an, a stock trade into an option trade? Um, <clears throat> I use the thinkorswim platform. Uh, you'll have a hard time convincing me that there's a better one out there by way of combination of charts, order types. And so, so the charts that I can, you know, look at my analysis, the order types, OCO, first trigger, OCO, I could do first trigger three OCO and I can put a condition on every order. I can do what I need with orders. Lastly, um, option pricing model, fantastic stuff. Um, and so we'll use that. Um, uh, the, uh, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be, I'm excited. I'm very, I love options. Um, we'll be into options for the next two months on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, Sandy says, I love this possibly follow a trade from woe to go all stages, the trade itself triggers to close post trade analysis. Okay. So, I think that the alerts will give us a great opportunity to do that in an ongoing basis. Right. So, you know, I, I can't do, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely try to manage the trade. I'm not going to give out. I don't want to give like where you're not picking some of the, you know, I'm going to give ranges, right? Here's our range. Everything will be a little bit of a range so that there will be decision making. But it will, but yes, I think that's a great idea where you can look at here's stage one. What did we see? What did we like? What did we do? Here's stage two. Here's stage three when we started tightening our stop and we sold a piece. Here's stage four when I was getting close and I put a tight trail stop or I sold the rest, right? And then we can go back and do a little bit of a post mortem. Great idea. Fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, to close up, Leonard, take a look at these videos. We'll dive into it next week. Um, and I will have at least some sample version of what a uh, whatever the trade alert is. I'll be like, you know, in this trade, I would consider a, I'm not going to go through. Um, and, and 
build it out. I want you guys to have practice with that as well. I mean, right. We want to, but I will, I will give what I would be believed to be the best trade, whether it's, you know, buy a credit spread or buy a debit spread or uh, buy an out of the money option or sell a, sell a bull put spread at the money, right. Different. There'll be different, uh, an option strategy that will correlate to it. And that'll, you know, point you in the right direction there as well. Awesome. Okay. This is exactly what I was hoping for. What else is coming down upcoming? So we have the alerts. They'll be in text. They'll be in Discord. I'm I'm trying to think of ways to make Discord something that you just kind of keep. And whenever you're on the market, right? So here's my here's what I would like. And and I know I'm sometimes bad at it as well. Um, but I do keep it up and I'll try when someone posts something, I'll try to be like, oh hey, blah, blah, right? And, and have some dialogue. But I want that to be the kind of resource where you guys pop in and, and you just are like, hey, who's on, right? Who's who's online? I mean, you can see it. Leonard says, I still need the, you sure do. I sent one on Sunday, but if you're not getting emails, you didn't get it. So I'll send it again, of course. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, so, yes. And uh, what can we do? My thought was this, and I tried to do it on Thursdays. Um, I got a I got a text from Gary. You guys have met Gary once. I'm trying to I'm trying to bring on a couple of other coaches, but I really am making sure that they are, you know, at at speed for what we do and ready to answer questions. And so there there's a couple of aspects of what we do that they're getting right. They're they're full time traders. Um, but there's just a couple of things we do as a group that I want to make sure that they're up to speed with. That's Gary and Glenn. You'll see them probably at the nighttime sessions, and then you'll see them pop into like the the Discord. So I'm gonna have extra guys, extra traders coming in to to have like uh, maybe uh, I'll I'll maybe be here Tuesday morning, Thursday morning. Um, maybe one of them will come, you know. Uh, uh, spend we'll have some specific hours where they show up and it's just like you can have dialogue with other traders and with them but we we do want it to be a resource that you guys use amongst yourself as the group grows and we already have i think enough active and and savvy traders that if everyone was jumping in there um and maybe what we'll do is just try to be like hey you know what um let's have a wednesday night at 6 p.m you know, uh, um, cocktail trader talk or something where you just kind of pop on and you know, even if it's just like shoot the shit with other traders, it's, it's a lonely game sometimes. You know, you talk to someone and you're like, oh yeah, I'm learning to trade options. They're like, oh, my uncle Harry bought an option. He lost everything, blah, blah. And you don't get a good vibe from it, right? Um, you know, being able to interact with like-minded people. So I, I worked at an education company. This is, I'm going back like 15, God, even longer than that now, quite a while, quite a while. Um, and, uh, we, it was a big one, right? So it was a big company. We actually merged. So this trading education company was called invest tools. There's still some remnants of it here and there that I see invest tools merged with thinkorswim. Um, this was back in 2006, maybe. Um, I was there until 2008, and it was 2009 is when Ameritrade came in and bought everybody. But uh, Think or Swim was just this outfit out of Chicago. A bunch of old market makers started this, right? So they had this beautiful option education. We had 100,000 option traders that we educated, um, and so it was a great fit. That 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 place, one of the things we did, we had a lot of of workshops around the country. So there was large groups. And, and one of the most successful times was when we had user groups and they were phenomenal. The only problem was they inevitably failed, right? The traders who were at first, everyone was just learning so fast. The problem was one person was responsible and everybody else kind of leached. And that person, they actually got hired. These user groups leaders got hired by our company and they got like free access to you know, the workshops and things. And, um, but they just, we couldn't keep these user groups going because one person couldn't be responsible. For so the ability that we have to integrate it into what we're already doing 
we all use the same trading plan. I listen to the same trading plan I've used for 20 years. We all use the same trading plan. We all keep records the same way. We all evaluate the market the same way. We all tend to see the same watch list. And some people are like, oh, we can't all, we watch things that trade tens of thousands of options. It can sustain all of us trading at the same time. That's one of the reasons we do it, right? No one's here piggybacking. No one's here. Everyone's got the same objective. And, and, and I don't think you guys, hopefully you're starting to understand, but that's a super rare thing in, in, in investment education. It's very, rare, very hard to build communities that last, that are real communities, not like, you know, a message board and, you know, people. And then, right. This is, a, it's a controlled environment. We dictate, we control. You can't just, we don't have trolls. We don't have people popping in. It's a really strong thing to have that. So, if we can work to build that out together, I think you'll find it such an invaluable resource to just be able to pop in and there'll be a like-minded trader who's looking at something else. And you're like, hey, are you seeing what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Anyways, um, let's let's all understand the potential of what we have because we're, we're building this thing. This is gonna become the premier uh, uh, coaching, like group coaching slash, I don't even know what you call it. I mean, we're, we, we do a little bit of everything, right? Um, but, uh, it's complete, it's comprehensive. And that piece of it is critical. When, when I was brainstorming what this group could be, and I knew when I first started, Perry will attest to this because he was there for it. I said, I don't know, man, I don't know what this is going to be. I have some ideas <laughs> that I've been working on for the past 15 years that I would really like to implement into this type of a setting. Um, but I don't know. I'm open. Whatever, if it works, let's keep doing it. If it doesn't work, throw it out. Um, and we will it'll keep getting better and better. So that's that's this kind of Kaizen brainstorm where, you know, um what um Leonard said, what would be the best trading for a beginner to start off with? Forex options, ETFs. I, I always think start with stocks because options are just a derivative of stocks. Options give us more ways that we can trade stock where we can say, hey, gosh, you know what? I could get into an option trade where if the stock only goes up a little bit, I still make all my money, right? With the spread or with, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things we can do, but we have to start with the stock because that's just technical analysis. <laughs> so if you look at our watch list, it's a good, it's a good mix of um, stocks and ETFs. And if you notice, we tick, we stay with the highest liquidity, right? I want things that have real liquid options. I want it to be a competitive market. So I have tight spreads, um, so th those are some specific things. I think that's a great way to go for sure. Um, I love ETFs, but only if they're, I mean, if you notice, like we look at our sector rotation, those are the best ETFs, the XLs, XLB, XLF, XLY, XLK, um, XL, right. All of those are going to be high liquidity. So if you're going to trade options, only trade the highest liquidity, um, even though I'm not on TOS, it might be great to have some workshops on how to use the platform efficiency. Um, perfect. That's that's really not the platform, but that is a, how do we use an option pricing model? Because I I don't know how much you've looked around, Sandy, and, and if they have one, if you found an option pricing model in interactive brokers yet. But if not, I, I mean, and maybe you could even ping me outside one time to be like, hey, remember that time in, in a session you said, ping me to to just see if you can't find some kind of a, an option pricing model software that that's a standalone, but not through a broker. Anyways, good to have. Um, I love that. What else is upcoming? So we are going to do a session on the, the log of a hundred. So when you finish a log of a hundred, what do you do with it? People are like, how do I, a lot of people have, I, when I've worked with, so for the, let me bring it up so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, option log. When, when I get down to the bottom of this, that's it. End of formulas. Done. Don't, there's no reason to keep adding traits here because the formulas track 100 traits. And people are like, they want to put another row. And I've tried that before. And I've had it. It's messy and it's not helpful. Why? Because when I'm done here, I can always come back to this. I'll save this. Right now, it just says market watch option log. I'll save this. And I'll put the date range in the title, right? So I'll say option log uh, January 5 through March 
or through February uh, 27th, right? Or whatever today, whatever it is. Um, and and now I, I have this where I can come in and I'll, I'll do it. I'll come into these, to these, uh, um, you know, you can, you can come in and make note. You can just kind of see what you have here. I was actually thinking about this. You can just add another tab. They're locked. So you can't do much with them. But if you come in here, you can, you can just make notes. What did you learn? What are you trying to do better? Process it, process the hundred. And that's what we'll talk about on Thursdays. How do you, pro what questions should we ask and answer? Um, we should have an idea of based on these hundred trades, what are the what are the one or two things I want to focus on on the next hundred? Specifically being informed by those hundred, the data in those hundred are gonna help you. Um uh for for that, right? So it's gonna help you to essentially understand what did you do, what can you do better, and then you you take that to the next hundred. And you start the next spreadsheet using that as the basis. Now, um, you know, you you can go back and, and you know, um, you could take a picture of this here if you wanted. And just you, you, the cumulative results is the only thing you would really need to kind of be thinking about as you've got the next one through 25, right? Because you don't get much out of cumulative um, here, right? The, the one through 25 and the cumulative are the same. But once... If you have a sense of what it was, that's what you're looking for. Then as you start moving across, this is just giving you a more stable set of numbers. Um, but yeah, when I'm done with 100, I'm done with 100. I don't I don't want some long, doesn't matter. That's old. This is, this is where we are now. Every 100 trades, you should be improving. There should be something you're doing different, better. What are we trying to do better? Every 100 trades, get better. Uh, what is opening range for? So the opening range... When we go through that in the morning, that, that's kind of a day trader's perspective. A lot of day traders are going to wait. They're not going to just jump right into the market as it opens. They're going to wait for that opening range to establish itself. 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes for some people. Mine's 20. I look at the first 20 and I, and I look at that opening range. And then as it breaks out one way or the other, that's when the day traders tend to take their positions and move in a little stronger, right? So they're kind of waiting for it, the opening to settle in. All the overnight trades are coming in. Market makers are doing their thing. And then as that first 20, all that volume comes, it starts to settle into a more stable environment. That's why I won't stop out in the first 20 minutes because I don't know anything yet. It's just, it's just kind of figuring its way, right? Um, and so... That just helps me to establish. Now, if I'm if I'm thinking I have a trade signal ready to go, maybe I had an alert and I'm like, hey, I'm going to wait for it to break the opening range to the upside. Then I'm going to go ahead and confirm and send this order or whatever it may be. It can help that way. If you ever day trade, which we will day trade in here. If we have a market that looked like 2022 when it was a, um, a, a true bear market, um, we would be doing some day trading. When the VIX is... Living above 20, 25, 30 VIX, yeah, oh hell yes, I'm gonna day trade. Now, if you if you don't have the ability to during the course of a day, well, of course you're not going to. But if if you can carve out a you know a three hour window, you don't have to be all six and a half hours. Most of the time, I'm gonna trade the the uh, uh, morning session. Then everyone goes to lunch. I think the I think the afternoon's less um, less. I don't want to use the word predictable, but it just is a little more volatile and unpredictable. Even then, the, but I like the morning. So I'm going to, I'm going to wait for the first 20 and then I'm going to trade that three hours from, you know, about, uh, um, about 10 o'clock to about 1231. And that's it. I'm going to find what I find in there. And so that opening range is going to help me decide which way do I go. So it can help you intraday. If you're going to be putting trades on, it just sort of helps you to kind of see like, once we establish what's going on, when does it become significant as it breaks one way or the other? Hope that makes sense. Sandy, you're asking great questions. Um, so we are going to do the, uh, we're going to do a um, trade log assessment, the 100 trade log assessment. We are going to do a full sample trading plan journey where we look at like a, a fully fleshed out trading plan. I have a, I have one. I, I won't use my own because I don't, a lot of people try to just like copy verbatim. And I think that's the wrong idea. 
Um, so I, I mean, my, obviously the sample is not just like made up out of nowhere. It's going to have a lot of pieces of what I do, but it's not exact. Um, so, um, I promise I'm doing you a favor with that. I will, we will do a full trading plan session. We will do a, now here's one that, I, and I'm not sure when this one's going to come. We are going to do what I call an experiment. The experiment is this. We are going to create a list of, you know, maybe like 300 stocks. Um, I'm probably going to end up using chat GPT to help me with this experiment because it can pull things like this, but I'm going to get like a random list of 300 stocks that are what that are, they've got to have weekly options. They've got to have a certain level of liquidity, right? There's going to be, it can't just be a purely random, but random from within that list. And we're going to tip, we're going to pick 10 random stocks. Then we're going to flip a coin with each one of those stocks. Heads, bullish tails bearish random stock random signal and then what are we going to do then we're going to build a trade and we're going to place those trades and we're going to and we're going to manage those trades and we're going to see how we do we're going to do an experiment random stocks random signals can we still can we still can i break even if i can break even in random what can i do when i'm in control can i make money in random so i've done this uh, it's going to be a paper trade. Yes, I'm going to paper trade these, but I am in a live paper trade. These, so it's going to be legit, right? I'm going to use my paper account for these trades, but I'm going to, I'm going to place these. Um, so it's hilarious. I've done it three times. I've made money twice, broke even once, never lost money doing the experiment. It's only three times. So it's not like it's a huge sample size. You're like, never, you never have in three times. Amazing. <laughs> but yes, never. The experiment, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot to learn there because, hey, that's how you know you're good trading, right? You're good trading. You trade well. If we can do the experiment, we know where we are. Um, I think that's it. I think those are the things that are coming. So the experiment, we've got a couple of like core presentations on trading plan, on record keeping after the fact, um, a full trade. Um, and it's actually interesting um, for both of uh, for uh, uh, we're doing something, you know, this is, this is more of a marketing piece for our YouTube channel as we start to, you know, try to entice people to come in, but I'm going to do a full option trade where it's like six 30 minute sessions, breaking it down just to the most basic simple. So if you're fairly advanced, you might watch it and be like, Oh, that was, that was, that was hard. But I think we all take for granted sometimes like, hey, have we ever, do we feel like we really built that foundation and options or would it be nice to just watch that whole straight from the beginning? So I think you'll find that useful. I mean, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to expand what's in the, in the content library always, of course, I, I, you know, all the, all the foundation stuff that we do, I put that in there. It's always available for you to go back and take a look at. Um, so those are what's coming. Uh, we're going to continue doing our regular things, Sunday posturing, trading Monday, Wednesday, Friday with our opening opening bell, midweek check-in, market wrap. We're going to keep doing trading foundations um, for two months at a time, and then we're going to keep doing options foundations two at a time um, and make sure that it just is clicking, that you're feeling good. But like I said, what else can we be doing? Discord, alerts. The alerts, that's us. We're, we're getting those ready for you. And, and hopefully that's something where you're like, hey, you know what? It's nice to have someone kind of hand hand feeding me a, a trade a couple of times a week. Just like, hey, look at this. It's popping. It's, uh, you know, well, I'll tell you what, there's going to be losers. <laughs> there will be losers, my friends. You got to be ready for those losers. So, um, okay. The Discord in general, my ideas. Tell me what you think. Um, meet like formal meetings where, like, where like we say, hey, let's have uh, let's have Thursdays from nine fifteen to ten fifteen be just like uh, anytime we don't meet. So we meet on Monday and Wednesday morning. So maybe Tuesday, Thursday, Friday morning for the same period of time. It's nice to just pop in, and everyone can be like, hey, what do you what are you seeing? 
What do you like in the news today? What do you think about these futures? What do we think? Right. You can talk about the opening range. You can talk about the signals that are setting up. You can take the short list that we have and be like, Hey, do we, anyone thinking of just bounce it, talk about it. Um, I think that it's a good to have that support. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, maybe there'll be some evening sessions, right. Where it's like a cocktail trading talk or something where you pour yourself a beer and you sit down. I don't know, Sandy, what time it makes it for you. Um, I hear the Australians are good for drinking though. So like, what? it's happy hour somewhere. Um, but you have a, yeah, you know, socialize a little bit. Talk about the struggles. Talk about, you know, it's nice to hear it. I promise. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, we saw our best, best trajectories of education and results in the user groups, but they just couldn't sustain. I believe we have the ability to sustain that as a group. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep doing my best. I'm going to bring Gary and Glenn to help me to achieve that and, and have them popping in there as well. Um, here's what I want you to realize about that. So if, if we really get people using it and get good with it, it's not just like we can go in there and say hello to each other. Once we get good, we can open up a, a video version where you can actually like turn your screens on and, and be talking and like having conversations and then sharing your screen to show a chart. Right. But I, I don't want it to be overwhelming at first. Let's just get in there, start having some chat conversations, start getting some alerts. And when we really start getting pretty good, we can raise the level and you'll be able to be like, Hey, you know what? Um, Maybe, maybe you form your own groups and you say, you know what? I'll tell you, I know Steven's going to love this. He's going to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Where he says, hey, I'm going to go on there. I'll be there at this time. Anyone who can, wants to come on, come on, share your screen, turn your cameras on, have a conversation. It's a very cool software. And we can do some great things with it in, in our ability to collaborate as traders, as a group. Um, we're not competing here, right? We're We're competing with everybody else overall. And we make sure that we trade markets that allow that. If you're trading, if you ever in a service with illiquid markets, man, you should really be like, is this guy front running me? If you don't know what that is, it's where they're going to put the trade on. Then they put it out. If you have illiquid options, it is shady as hell. If you have illiquid, if you have a stock with illiquid options and you put a trade on and then you go out and you say, oh, I love this trade and you put it on, um, you'll get a bump, right? You'll get a, I mean, if you got, 25 people trading five contracts each. That's 125 contracts. But if you have something that only has 50 to 80 contracts to begin with, and all of a sudden it's 125, that person will make money on the 125 coming in as the market maker's like, oh, right? And it's almost like the market maker knows, like, oh, this someone probably put this out. So they're going to raise the price up. And then when everyone stops buying, guess what? Bam, it goes back down. So the person front running, guess what they do? They put it in, they look for a quick 30% and they're out. And every time they put an alert out, you're paying them to help them make money on trades while you don't make money. That sounds terrible, right? I mean, that's, I, I understand having been in this industry as long as I have, I've seen a lot of things and I don't like a lot of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, so there's a lot of good marketers out there. A lot of really good marketers out there. I don't think there's nearly as many good traders out there. Um, and I think at this point, a lot of people can smell the bullshit, right? Like they'll, I hope people come in and be like, if you listen to me for 30 minutes and you think, I don't know if this guy knows. Okay. I, I feel like I can establish that, that the mechanisms that we use, the processes, what we focus on, how we focus on it. It's right. There's not any other way. There's no other way. Um, I'll hear people come on and be like, oh, I listened to this webinar and they said this same as you. And I'll be like, they're legit then. I immediately, you know what's legit and you know when someone's just selling signals. Yeah. Okay. So it's up to us. We've got to, we've got to make this what it's going to be. Right. I don't, I don't want somebody to think, oh, he's, what we're going to do is going to be the only path that will get you to becoming a successful trader long-term. That's it. Um, anyways. Okay. We've talked about some things that are upcoming. 
We've had a few brainstorm ideas, which I love. We've got Leonard's email. I'm going to make sure. Um, what's good that we should keep doing? Is there anything where we're just kind of spinning our wheels? And you're like, that's not that helpful. And it takes 12 minutes, which is a lifetime when we only have an hour. If there's, if you feel like you're not going to hurt my feelings, my feelings don't hurt easy, I promise. If you, if you're like, you know what, it's good, but make it three minutes, not 10 or, you know, whatever it is, let me know. Leonard says, I'm an, oh, thank you, Leonard. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, I love this, you guys. And I will tell you this, I trade better. I've been, my numbers are better now than they were when I started this. My expectancy has increased. I know for a fact that there are times that the things that I'm saying to you, my subconscious needs right then, like, yeah, sell it. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? <laughs> right? Like, come on, man, follow your rules. We all break rules sometimes. Of course we do. Um, Sandy says she doesn't have it yet, but I will in the future. I have no doubt about that, Sandy. None at all. Um, yeah. So if there's, uh, if you feel like, you're not sure why we're doing it. Um, you think we could speed it up? You think it's not as important? I, whatever. Let me let me know. Um, and then lastly, I know we're getting close to the end. What can we do we haven't thought of yet? This is uh, this is spaghetti at the wall. Even if it's like, yeah, there's no way. I don't care. Put it out there. That's that's put it out there. If we could someday work it in um th this this group will never we are never satisfied with our with our trading process with our uh, uh efficacy as a group we're never satisfied that's our that's our mindset yeah so that's the question is what are we doing what can we be doing even if it's down the road a little ways um i definitely would love to do some additional things um you know, in a, in a website setting, yeah, the development of that can be kind of, you know, iffy and spotty at times where it's like, you start feeling like you're on the right path. So I, I it's important for us to prioritize what we think is the most important thing. That's going to be the most helpful. Um, love it. Thank you, Sandy. They are shitty PowerPoints. I'm not going to lie. There's no pictures, right? Sandy said, briefer talking, briefer PowerPoints because you're already set talking about it. I love that. That's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good call out. They are ugly PowerPoints. I get that. I will tell you this. I, I designed the logo. Um, <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. I think that's a cool ass bull right there, right? Uh, apparently... Apparently, I'm getting a, a polo with the logo on it, and I'm all stoked about that. I'm like, yeah, and a hat. I think I'm getting a hat too. Anyways, um, so yeah, I made that logo. Um, I think I could pare it down, put some, put less words, maybe a couple of pictures here or there, just so it's not so bleak. Staring at it, great feedback, love it. Okay, anything else? Anything else? Here's what's coming up. Thursday is our last trading foundations, trading. The cement is poured. Everything is in there. If you haven't been to everything, let's give you a quick reminder of what's in there. The markets, the platforms, how to read charts, how to manage risk. What are the stages of a trade? What's your psychology? How do you paper trade? How do we build systems, strategies, and rules? How do I develop a market posture? How do I develop my trading posture? Is fundamental analysis important and should I do it? No, um, I'm just kidding. If you like it, do it. If you don't, yeah. What are your, my routines? How do I build my trading plan? How do I keep good records? How do I analyze those records? Should I start thinking about options? How do I assess trades when I'm done? Let's go through a case study, um, right? I mean, it's, it's all in there. Any piece, if there's any piece of your foundation, remember the analogy, we're building a house. Everybody's house is different in size, shape, style, color. Everybody's house should start with the same beginning, though. Deep, strong cement. Don't build, don't, a lot of traders put their houses on a 
fed of sand. It's not very good. What is the stop limit? Remember, stop limit is is that. Remember, stop is a two pronged order. The stop itself is what tr is triggers. The the second half, stop loss or stop market are used interchangeably. Is it triggers a market order? So that means it's gone. The next second, right? Bam! Second, the stop hits. It's gone. A stop limit is a stop where there's a trigger, but it triggers a limit order at or better. Remember, limit is at or better. So it's not very good from a, a, a safety perspective, right? A lot of times our stop losses, you know, if, if I had a stock at $50.15 and I had a stop at 50 and it dropped down and it hit 50, the next available price was $49.99. If I have a stop loss, I'm going to sell at $49.99. If I have a stop limit and the limit's at 50, it's not going to sell. It's going to have a limit at 50, waiting until it can sell it at 50. And if it drops to 49 and then 48 and then 47, I'm still sitting there with a limit of 50. Have you seen this before, Scott? That's a great question, whoever asked that. Yes. In fact, the year was 2001, a much, a much younger slimmer, <laughs> less gray Scott was working at Fidelity on the trade dispute desk. People would say, hey, I put an order in, didn't feel right. And I'd say, oh, oh, okay, let me look into that for you. What happened? Somebody put in a stop limit order. And it, this is 2001. Things were going dropping like crazy, right? It would opened at 51, it closed at 40, 38. Thousand shares, that's 13 grand if you don't stop out. What do I have to say? I'm sorry, you placed a stop limit order. You still have a limit order at 50, but now it's at 37. So remember, a stop loss on a stock is a protective order. Stop limit doesn't protect it. It, it. it guarantees that you'll get out at a certain price, but if you're stopping out, you're not really worried about the price. You're just trying to get out. Hopefully that makes sense. Um. I'm using make it automatic when you put in a stop loss. Is that normal? Yeah, it should be automatic. Is that like a phrase that they ask you for? It should be a stop loss is it triggers a market order. So yeah, good question. Okay. Okay. Um, Thursday, uh, I'm going to have either, I have Steven and Press both sent me their logs and they both, Agreed, but neither of them are here tonight. And I know Steven is out of town and I don't know if he'll be back yet or not. So maybe I'll do presses and, and I'll make sure he knows that I'm going to do it so he can come and answer questions or something. Uh, but that's what we're looking to do on Thursday um, is just kind of review a, a log of 100 trades and we'll see where that puts us. Okay, tomorrow morning, as usual, midweek check-in. So it's markets just kind of sit. It's kind of like, is it going to sit? Is it going to consolidate? <laughs> We're all waiting for some inflation numbers to come. Oh, okay. Right? Remember what I said. A lot of times when people think I have a six or a seven for a market posture score, it's, it's you know, better, easier than if I have a two or a three. It's better in that I'm more bullish. It's not necessarily easier, right? Markets are always going to have time where they're just like, oh, so they're a little jittery. and But it just sort of makes sure that we stay focused so that when things move again, we're ready for them to move again. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting week. We'll see what it does. And uh, we'll go from there. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Thanks as always. Hey, this was great. I wasn't quite sure, you know, what to expect where I'm like, I, I, I think I kind of, I know you were thinking we were going to go through the log today. Um, I hope this is all right. I, I hope this is all right. I want you to feel like you have a voice. I want you to feel like, you know, you, you, you have say in this group that we're, we're building this community, this service, whatever we want to call it. It's good to see everybody. Have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow morning. As always, happy trading.